21 on 11. Brought to you by our sponsor. And this is the point at which our sponsor would have his own identification. The way the program runs on a nightly basis, immediately after the sponsor identification, the introduction of the show, we have a brief outline of what our Century 21 progress report is going to cover for this particular night. And after that headline summary of what is going to happen, then your commercial message. Uh, we certainly hope that we'll have the pleasure of telling the people why they should make not only the world's fair, but your product part of their future. Now the story of what we are trying to, are actually doing and plan to do on the Century 21 Progress Report program is the subject of this film and this videotape that we are making at this moment. And we plan on covering all aspects of the Seattle World's Fair. It so far has taken us out of the country as far away as Canada to the surrounding areas and cities, the local area itself, and of course the big news at the present moment concerns itself more with the Seattle World's Fair site itself, the construction and the progress in the construction field. Coliseum 21 is one of the big parts of our future and our Seattle World's Fair. The world of tomorrow awaits you, and I'd like to invite you to think, if you will, of living a century from now. To satiate your curiosity, Coliseum Century 21 answers what is life in the next century going to be like? And this four-acre exhibition, entirely housed under one roof, will show how you would live, work, travel, and play 100 years from now. And let's take off on an imaginary tour of this seven and one half million dollar show. On entering, the impressions of vastness are going to be yours, a pleasant awareness of music, way out music in the background, an ethereal garden, a city built of multicolored cubes, and in focus you will see a sensational plastic bubble bathed in iridescent light. That bubble is the elevator of tomorrow. It's called a bubbleator. The operator dressed in a horizon blue suit of disposable non-woven fabric will greet you with a step to the rear, and you will take off for Utop Utopia Century 21. First floor, threats, thresholds, frustrations, fulfillments, challenges, and opportunities. And translated into living images and situations, the world of tomorrow will be on display. Well, of course, the Colosseum is not built, but the construction of that Colosseum is part of our story. And the weather plays a big part. You see these people in downtown Seattle, captured in the camera of Wally Foxhole early one morning, and the winds blowing the clothes, the coats, the hats, the hair, the street lights. Uh, well, needless to say, it was quite a windy morning. And the wind can play an important part in hindering and helping in construction. As the window panes were wavering, they had trouble on Coliseum 21 on this particular morning. That is the inside uh, view looking up, and here you are now on the roof of Coliseum 21, looking at the fellows who are repairing some of the damage that wind did do. The Coliseum 21 is going to have some 115,000 plus square feet of aluminum roofing panels to be placed into position on that roof. It's an entirely new concept of construction. 49, 39 to 40 to 49 of them were blown off that morning, and here you see them. They had to be put back into place and become part of construction, once again, part of the job that had to be redone on Coliseum 21. But the continuing story, and we have already brought to our viewers the groundbreaking ceremonies, the putting up of the main beams, and now we're at the stage of the roofing. That will be a continuing part of our story. Well, we were back downtown once again recently for another exciting part of the world of tomorrow and Century 21 and Seattle's World's Fair. That was in conjunction with Seattle's monorail, that monorail that will whisk people from downtown Seattle to the fair site in uh, just a matter of seconds. And it can handle up to about 10,000 people per hour, the capacity. This is the artist's conception of what the monorail is going to look like. This in the downtown area as the beams are being placed uh, upon the supporting stanchions and supporting beams. And on the other end of the monorail will be the platform where the people will disembark. Uh, they will be right in the Century 21 Seattle World's Fair area. Well, construction of that monorail is part of our continuing story. Here you see the first of the giant pre-stressed concrete running rails on which the streamlined trains will ride going into position. These pictures that were captured in Wally Foxhole's camera. These beams weigh approximately 50 tons, 96,000 pounds. They're 76 feet long. They're pre-cast reinforced concrete and putting them into place is the job of skilled workmen. Those rails will actually carry the monorail, the
cars and the passengers on out to the Century 21 site. The two trains shuttle back and forth, turn around on either end, double-ended motor units that can be operated by either end. They're being manufactured in Europe. But the monorail story took us to the city of Tacoma, nearby Seattle, where the concrete technology of Tacoma operation is in the business of making those big beams and rails and the pre-stressed and reinforced concrete. Here you see some of that action. The reinforcing frame that is placed into position. The concrete then, of course, goes around the frame. And through the technology, the gentlemen at Concrete Technology of Tacoma have developed and processed and uh, the skill of these workmen, those beams, when they come to Seattle, by special trucking arrangements, by the way, that carry them from the Tacoma Tide Flat plant, downtown Seattle, highway department had to give approval for the overweight and overly long loads but police escorts and uh, a rather circuitous route managed to get the rails from this position where they are actually fabricated and built, transported to Seattle and going into shape, and the monorail will be a thing of the future. We will watch it grow here on C-21 on 11. Well, this is the fellow seated right next to me that is responsible for the pictures that we take and show each night on this program, Wally Fossil. How are you, Bob? How are you, Wally? Wally, you've been, uh, see, I mentioned, I think, you've been to Canada so far. That's right. We made a trip to Canada, and Governor Rosalini and some of the Century 21 group were starting to their trip, or uh, starting on their trip, I should say, to Paris and Italy. And Part of the flying squadron. Well, Wally, Wally, you got practically that high on the air several times before, just covering some of the construction. But I'm sure that you'll be logging many miles between now and the end of the Seattle World's Fair, between now and September of 1962. And I'd like to talk about a little film that you shot that, uh, well, it was so popular we've shown it twice. We'll get to that in a moment. First, though, let's go back and talk and take a look at uh, probably one of the spectacular sights on the skyline of Seattle and parts of uh, Century 21 and the Seattle World's Fair, and that's the 600-foot Space Needle restaurant. And in case you don't know what that restaurant looks like and is going to look like when it's finished, we'd like to show you the finished product, and then we'll talk a little bit about where they are now. This is the needle. It's become, I guess you might say, the symbol of the 1962 Seattle World's Fair. And it will feature a beautiful restaurant, an observation deck on the top. Near the top of the restaurant, that, uh, near the top, that restaurant will rotate 360 degrees every hour, offering a rather breathtaking view of the Cascade Mountains from Mount Rainier to Mount Baker and the rugged Olympic Mountains, the peninsula, Puget Sound, Lake Washington, the city of Seattle, and of course, the fairgrounds. Now that's where you will be enjoying the view. We couldn't wait. At least Wally couldn't wait. I can wait. But he went up a little early. Uh, first of all, he went up uh, on the tower itself. You saw there, that, a moment ago, Wally's pictures of the workmen going home. This was another windy day when work on the Space Needle had to cease. Well, Wally was curious enough to want to go up on the needle and see what it looks like securing. And there's a spectacular picture of a man's hat whipping around in the breeze. So Wally and two or three workmen went up on the needle, and he captured those pictures of the fellow securing the needle and quitting work for the day. Paul Callop on the ground right here as Wally, when he came down, on a better day, I might add, here you see Wally entering that uh, bucket. Right, Wally? Right, Bob. This was the first ride, along with uh, an official photographer for Pacific Car and Foundry. Wally went up and took a ride in this bucket, which suspended from a boom and a crane. And actually, as you will see as these pictures go along, he captured pictures from above the Space Needle looking down. And you were about one of the first men in space, I guess, Wally, for the man in space age uh, theme of the World's Fair. How did it feel? Oh, it was, it was a great ride, Bob. Actually, uh, the view was tremendous up there, too. Of course, the bucket uh, uh, would swing from side to side and turn a little bit, but it was, it was a very, very good ride. Uh, I feel that is the only way to get good film of this Space Needle being built. And uh, many of the people from the ground, of course, have no idea how the needle is being built, and this is one way of showing them a closer view. That's true. There are a lot of us that don't have any idea what it looks like from up there. <laughs> but if you don't mind, Wally, I'll wait until the rest is built, and I'll travel up on the elevator. Uh, was it difficult to try to decide what to take pictures of? When well, you things were happening so fast as uh, we turned almost uh, 360 degrees around yeah. the, the needle. The boom was raised almost straight up so that we could shoot down uh, right on the end of the beams, you might say. And um, 
it was difficult at times to there's decide the what to Seattle do. Uh, skyline and landscape there's a close-up of the view of the big time outdoor sign which counts the days the remaining days the official countdown that's tied in with the chronometer the official chronometer out of the century 21 office counting the days to C21 and that's part of the view of that sign and the rest of the city from where only you and a couple other people <coughs> have had the opportunity to to see now you're going on up even further yeah. here we're watching some welders at work the, the needle is put together with a high tensile bolt uh, that's right very uh, welding is only in some spots but actually the the uh, the big uh, supporting, supporting columns, columns themselves are, are together high tensile bolt. bolding are they no no uh, riveting and uh, no welding in that particular spec. Now there you are now, Wally, probably as high as you can get on the stick. About, about it. We're looking right down the column. Into those curve columns. And uh, the Space Needle now has reached the point in construction uh, where it is starting to reach out from the narrowest point, where it reaches that uh, narrowest point, and then it reaches out for the supporting beams that will hold the, the rotating restaurant itself. And a wonderful crew of fellas and uh, well, I'm sure that you'll be up there every opportunity that you can uh, make the trip, Wally, to bring the people the best possible picture story. Right, Bob. Here's the view looking right straight down the column. This is the highest point. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, I do hope to be up there uh, many times in the near future. That'll be kind of fun. That's uh, the waterfront, I think, in the background there, and you undoubtedly saw Lake Union and the... Well, the view from up there is tremendous. And of course, this isn't as high as the restaurant will be when it's completed. Of course, they have uh, a few more feet to go. I think it's about 550 feet to the restaurant level. 600 foot needle. Here, Wally taking the ride in the bucket on the way down. And that bucket only had what? About a two foot three board on about, it? About two. Here's a bucket that is exactly like the one we're riding in right here. About a two foot three board. I was going to ball you out, Wally, for not holding your camera steady, but I won't. Did you shake around all that up there? <laughs> you were shaking around quite a bit. Of course, if, uh, uh, if you didn't show the movement, you would never know what the ride would like. Well, that's right. And I stayed on the ground, and I watched the whole operation and enjoyed it tremendously, and we had the opportunity to bring the pictures to you. I asked people, and have asked many people, what they thought of uh, these pictures, and as a cameraman that will take a ride to the needle, I asked this fellow what he thought. His only comment was, I've seen the fire hydrants, but this is ridiculous said it twice <laughs> but a lot of the other people said if they didn't mind uh, if you didn't mind and if uh, everybody didn't mind they'll stay and take a look at your pictures and then they'll enjoy the view from the rest of it well Wally I know that you're going to be going everywhere to do everything to take all of the pictures you've had a rather busy day today and last night all right uh, all is not the story of the Seattle World's Fair and Century 21 is not all just construction we plan on going to many places and of course, the surrounding area and the city of Seattle itself is part of our story. Wally captured some pictures last night. We'd like to show you and explain what that's all about. The pictures of the city of Seattle seen at night with many of the lights blazing. Now, Seattle was lighted up for a special purpose last night. These pictures were taken, sponsored by the Building Owners and Managers Association and the Central Association, which is conducting a beautification campaign of the city. Uh, city was lighted up to give the folks a rather a treat and a glimpse at the future. And as lighted as the city was last night, Wally, with the office buildings, all the major office buildings leaving the lights on, that was the Smith Tower we saw a moment ago, uh, it's going to be more lighted because of the Central Association plan to get people to light up their buildings at night, not only the lights on the inside. Here's the Washington building, which is a wonderful example of how lighting can make a, a, a building even more beautiful than it is. But they want everybody to paint up, clean up, add beauty to the city, and put your best foot forward. That's the general idea. Well, the science pavilion is going to be a big part of our story on the coverage of Century 21, and uh, certainly it should be. A $9 million federal government investment and some of the top scientists of the, of the country. Dr. Glenn Seberg, chairman of the AEC, predicts that this world of science will provide a broad contribution to the scientific literacy of the present generation and probably inspire many young people to go into the scientific field. That's the Science Pavilion. It's under construction. We've covered some of the interesting phases of the building of that and we'll continue to do the same. 
That is only part of the story, of course. There are many other facets of Century 21 in the Seattle World's Fair. This fountain is one of the beautiful things that will be seen. It's hard to picture just exactly from this particular photograph how big and how magnificent the water sculpture is going to be. But this is another of the stories we will be covering. Well, the city of Seattle, the Spaceway, the Midway, the many rides, the carnival area, and here you see that sky ride. It will be going up. The construction will be taking place. We'll be following that. We'll be talking to kids. We'll be talking to artists and we'll be talking to concessionaires all about what's going to be taking place during Seattle World's Fair. We also got out on the town to see how the Seattle World's Fair and progress itself is affecting the city of Seattle and the surrounding areas. The airport is adding additional motels. There are motels, restaurants, and, uh, well, the Hyatt House, one of them, for example, uh, recently gone up in the area, all to take care of the many thousands of tourists. And I guess thousands isn't the proper word. It probably should be put into the numbers of millions of tourists that we expect to come to this city during the period April 1962 and for six months hence. And the, uh, as we said, in the airport area itself, there's the Hyatt House and the, the Hilton House, the swept wing. All these, there's the swept wing. These motels, these lodges, these facilities going up to take care of the tremendous influx of people that will be coming to our area. So it's understandable why Century 21, the Central Association and all people urge all the peoples of Seattle to put their best foot forward and to help to spread the story. Now these restaurants, these hotels uh, are going to be not strange to people coming here, even though they're strangers to the area, because Expo Lodging is at the service of the people. The most elaborate, remarkable arrangements ever devised are underway to assure the comfort and convenience of Century 21 and the people that will be coming to our area. Expo Lodging has already processed more than 10,000 advance requests for reservations. The inquiries are first acknowledged, then transferred to members who confirm the order directly, so that the Expo Lodging uh, Hospitality houses that will be in existence in gateway cities such as Spokane and Pasco, Blaine, Yakima, Vancouver, all to facilitate reservations. They have trained hostesses and a lot of people to do the job. Not just the airport, but the waterfront is taking on a new look. Here's the Polynesian, one of many new additions to the Seattle waterfront, that uh, big motel and uh, another facility is in the planning stages that will be changing the look of the waterfront too. So all of it is... Uh, certainly another part of what is happening to the Puget Sound area and the city of Seattle itself in conjunction with the expected people that will be coming here for Century 21, Seattle's World's Fair. These are rather wonderful pictures captured from the inside of Polynesia that kind of tell the story. Looking out on the wonderful Puget Sound, one of Seattle's famous ferries coming in, and on that ferry, of course, the story of Century 21. Transit, transportation, the monorail, the hotel facilities, the shuttle buses, the ferries. Well, it's all part of the story of the Seattle World's Fair. We'll be here each night to tell that story to all of the people that join us on C21 on 11. I hope that you as a sponsor can become part of that story. <laughs>